Today we are here with the moving headlight from Sheds. It is a 7 by 20 watt light. There are seven separate LED diodes on it, each one being 20 watts. Let's get into the unboxing of this. Alright, so first we have our manual. Um, let's set that aside. Got some nice packing foam here. And it's not the stuff that falls apart and gets everywhere, so that's nice. And then, right here we have the actual light. Let's see, just like this maybe. There it is. And then we have our power cable, the DMX cable, and then the brackets to mount it. So let's set this off the side. Alright, here is the light. The grand review. Alright, so this sucker is pretty big. Um, wow. <laughs> let's get into demoing this now. Alright, so looking at the back of this light, we have our power con in and out, a switch, on and off switch, and then three pin DMX in and out. Then on the front here we have our menu system with the LCD display, and then a couple lights, one for DMX and one for, looks like, errors. So I'm going to go ahead and plug it in here. Alright, so I'm just going to plug it in the power here, and then flip the on switch and see what it does. It's the first thing I'm noticing very quiet right now. There's like a little loading screen on the front that has a um, progress bar on it warming up. And there we go, right into the DMX, it looks like, DMX mode. So I'm going to attempt to put this into auto just to get a little bit of life out of the unit. Let's go home. And then here we can go between different modes, so let's do mode, and then enter into auto mode. So now, it will come to life. Wow, it's very bright. <laughs> so effects going on now. And we'll get into more of this stuff when we demo the fixture later once it's a little bit darker outside. All right, we're here on the front of the light with the buttons. There we go, that fan turned off. Now I'm just gonna go through this menu. So pushing the home button, it brings us to the screen with setup, mode, hand, show, info, and plant. So under the setup menu, we have our uh, field to change the DMX starting address. We have encoder, yes and no, Pan reverse, yes and no. Tilt reverse, yes and no. And then we have an advanced setting. Now you have to enter a password, which I'm not entirely sure how to do yet. Um, that is in the manual. Under mode, we have, we can switch between DMX mode and then auto mode, which just kind of has the light do a bunch of random things. And then we have our sound mode, which again, the light does random things, but this time it's to sound, so whenever there's loud, something like that, it moves. 
Um, I'm gonna keep it in DMX for this. And we also are able to change the amount of channels between 21 channels and 49 channels. Um, this is for DMX, obviously. The hand menu <coughs> is a completely manual menu. So you can um, point the light wherever you want, x-axis, x-fine, y-axis, and y-fine, and then the speed, the focus, rotation, dimmer, strobe, and we have all colors and everything, color temperature. Um, it's basically the DMX, uh, like channels that you would get, but on the screen here. Personally, I wouldn't use this, but it would make sense, I guess, if you're setting it up in just one position for the whole night and don't need to have it DMX controlled. Here's a menu where you can change our language. Um, reverse would flip like the screen, like that. So put that back. Backlight, you know, I'm assuming it's the light on the screen like this, but I'm unsure of what exactly it means like that. If it turns off after a while, or I'm, I think that's what it is when the screen times out. If backlight says no, I think that means the, um, the actual light in the screen will be turned off as well. Um, and then our version model. This is just some info. And then we have plant. And again, it needs a password. Um, so I'll do some research on that and see if I can't find the password. But for now, I'm just going to keep it in DMX mode and mess around with that. All right, so we are outside right now testing how bright this light gets. It's honestly insane. I'm honestly speechless on the uh the brightness of this light i mean this thing is so bright it's lighting up trees way back there um and when i focus the beam it looks like it just is gonna go forever you throw it up in the air like this and it just keeps going it's crazy let's zoom it out and see what it looks like even yeah you can still see it wow it's pretty cool. I really like this fixture. So I'm pretty far away from the house right now. And this light just keeps shining. You can see it for quite a ways. It just looks like it keeps going. This would be really cool for outdoor events. Um, if you just had a little stage and like four to six of these things pointing up in the air like this, it could create some really cool... Um, visuals throughout the air. So far, I highly recommend this fixture. It's a very, very unique light. I love it. Now, I was a little bit worried that you won't be able to see the beam when the lights are being colored because uh, when it's white, all of the lights are on, um, the way that I had it set up. But even with color mixing, you can still see the beam through the air with no haze or anything. It's just the outside air. And, again, for reference, when it hits the trees, I mean, it's insanely bright. This thing is so bright. One thing I tested on this fixture was its color mixing capabilities using its red, green, blue, and white LED diodes. Each color that I made was vibrant and had depth to it. I was also able to make a very good quality white wash, ranging from cool to warm white colors. I did, however, notice this grid-like appearance that you can see in this picture. Now, it wasn't as bad as it looks in this picture, but it would be noticeable on a uh, white background. But if you're using this fixture to wash a set piece or a person, I'd say that this would be not noticeable at all. Overall, it has great color mixing, and I thought I would comment on the one little imperfection that I noticed. Something I noticed when the light was focused into a tight beam with color mixing was that you could see a little bit of a outline of a certain color. So like, for example, this video playing here, it was actually a yellow. It didn't show up on camera at all, but it was a very deep, vibrant yellow. And you could not see that as bad in person, but it did have a light uh, green ring around the uh, spot.
So that's another thing to keep in mind when using this fixture. You know, it's not too bad for a $350 light, though, of this brightness and with these many features. Another thing I noticed looking back on editing this video is there's like a halo ring around the spot, a f like a foot or so out from the center of the spot here, um, apart from that green ring that I mentioned earlier. And in person, I didn't notice that at all. I think that's just because the exposure on my phone was way high and um, it picked that up when in person with your eyes, you would not see that kind of light area around the focused spot. Something to be aware of as well is when the light is in a sharp beam, this is what it projects. It's just a kind of bunch of squares morphed together. Um, and it looks fine through the air. It just looks like a normal, like a beam would. But wherever it's pointing, it's going to look like that. Not a round spot. Um, but I honestly can't even think of anywhere that that would really matter. Um, I guess you could just zoom it out a little bit to make it a little bit blurry. And it might look more like a circle. I'll try that quick. So I zoomed it out. And um, it's a little bit closer to just a nice spot um, and the beam is still really nice so I guess you could just do that if that is something that bothers you at all. This fixture has the capability of being a beam, a wash, or a derby effect. So the beam and wash that has to do with the zoom of the fixture so there's a channel that you can control in DMX that zooms it out or zooms it in uh, which I'll touch on a little bit more later. And then the derby effect is the one that's very unique to this fixture. And I know a lot of people out there really do not like the look of a derby light. But I think this fixture provides some really cool opportunities to change it up a little bit by doing like a color gradient with that derby or like a really slow effect. Um, I'll put a couple in here that you can see that I think look pretty cool. Um, so I think this light could fit in any sort of venue it can be elegant, it can be fun, it could be in a club, a bar, something like that, or you could, be, uh, you could use it at like a wedding or something like that as well. This fixture has a zoom range of 4 degrees to 30 degrees. Now, each individual LED, there's seven of them, each one's 20 watts, each one can be a separate color, but they all zoom at the same rate, so it's not like you can have the outer ring look like more of a wash and then the center one focused. They're all either wash or they're all either focused. Or I should say zoom, zoomed in or zoomed out. Um, it gives a wash or spot type of effect though. You can have each individual light be a different color. You can have chases, like in this example here, this is some chases going on. Um, so you can basically just get so many effects out of this one light this light has a pan range of 540 degrees and a tilt range of 270 degrees. The video playing now is just a little sample of what the auto mode looks like. So I let it go through one entire uh, like rotation of effects and these could either be auto like this where it just goes from effect to effect or it could be sound triggered based on the beat. One thing that I noticed about this light that isn't so great is the fan noise. I'll have a clip playing here in a second to demo what that sounds like, but in my opinion it was pretty loud based on other fixtures that I've used in the past. Now this probably isn't a huge deal for people like DJs or clubs or bars, but it might be something to consider for theater applications. Overall, I recommend this light fixture to anyone who may be on the fence about buying it. I think the only cons that I noticed are the slight discoloration with the grid pattern um, and the spot slight color outline thing, um, as well as the loud fan noise. But if those don't affect you a whole lot, I think the pros completely outweigh any of the cons, and I'll go ahead and recommend this light. All right, so I hope you enjoyed this review of the Shed's Moving Headlight. Um, I'll put links in the description to buy this light if you're interested. And I want to thank Sheds for sending me this light to review. I was not paid, but they did send me this light to review. Um, and I'm looking forward to working with them more in the future. So thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.